Hi, my name is Johan, and uh, today I want to show you a few techniques for building libraries on top of Boost ACO. Uh, okay, so what's ACO? Uh, it's a cross-platform C++ library uh, for networking, and it also has an asynchronous model, and we'll look at how that works. Uh, so why would you use ACO? Uh, for me, uh, I wanted to use uh, C++ coroutines, uh, and I also needed networking and timers. So. Uh, let's do a quick introduction to ACO. So we'll look at uh, the flow of an asynchronous connect. Uh, first, we'll look at a flow chart from uh, ACO's documentation, and then I'll show you the same thing in, in code. So uh, our program needs a few things. Uh, it needs an IO execution context, which is uh, the link to the operating system's uh, I/O services. Uh, it needs an I/O object such as a TCP socket and a completion handler, which will be called when the operation uh, is completed. Uh, so, if we follow uh, the numbered arrows here, uh, we can see that the first step is for a program to to call the I/O object and start uh, initiate an asynchronous connect. And the I.O. object will forward the request to the execution context, uh, which will signal to the operating system to start an asynchronous connect. And then some time will pass, and uh, the operating system will notify when the connection is completed, and the result will be put on a queue. And uh, the next step is our program needs to call a run function on the execution context. Uh, and that will dequeue the result of the operation and pass it to the completion handler. And here's how that looks in code. So first we create the IO context and then create the socket, passing the IO context as a reference. We create an endpoint, host and port to connect to. And then we call async connect on the socket, passing our endpoint and our completion handler. And in this case, the completion handler is a lambda function. And the completion signature uh, takes an error code, which will tell us if the uh, connection was successful or not. Uh, and the call to async connect, it will, uh, it will return immediately. So the next step is to call uh, the run function on the IO context. Uh, and that function will block as long as there are uh, operations to, to handle. Uh, and inside the run function, when the connection completes, it will call our lambda function. Uh, there's also something called uh, completion tokens, uh, which are used to produce a completion handler. One of them is uh, use future. So instead of passing out a lambda, we can pass use future, and then the async connect will return a standard future. Uh, and we can call get on the future to retrieve the result. There's also one called use awaitable, which is the one I'm interested in because it can be used with, uh, with coroutines. So if we pass use awaitable, it will return something that we can co await. So if you're new to coroutines, I'll give a quick introduction and we'll look at how to receive a message uh, over the network. The, network uh, the message will consist of a header and a body, and uh, there's a field in the header that will tell us. Uh, the size of the body. So this is a coroutine, and we can tell by the return type, which is provided by ASU. It's called awaitable, and also by the uh, new C++ 20 keyword co-await. Uh, so we're doing two async reads here, uh, one to read the header, and then uh, to read the body. And as you can see, we're using uh, the use awaitable completion token here, so we can co-await on the result. Uh, and what happens here is when we reach the first co-await, we will initiate the async read, and then the function will suspend while we wait for the read to complete. And we can do other, thing, other things uh, concurrently while we wait for the read to complete. Uh, and once the, the read finishes, uh, it will resume the coroutine and will continue the next line. And uh, we don't need to worry about local variables or uh, function parameters. 
uh, we can use it like a regular function because uh, when the function suspends, they will be stored in something called uh, the coroutine frame. Um, so we get this uh, quite nice uh, synchronous looking flow, even though the, uh, the code is actually asynchronous. Uh, okay, next so we'll, we'll look at how to recreate this function using something called uh, composition. Uh, so by using composition, we can make our function uh, behave like any other uh, ACU operation, basically. And we do this with a little help from a function called async compose provided by ACU. So we create our function uh, async read here, and it takes a socket and a message and a completion token. And as you can see, the completion token is a template parameter here because we want to be able to take uh, any type of completion token. And the return value here uh, will be the result of the async compose uh, function call. And this will be different depending on which completion token is passed. So uh, if we pass use future, it will return a standard future. If we pass a lambda function, it will return void. Uh, so async compose takes two uh, template, template arguments, uh, the completion token and the completion token signature. And uh, this signature uh, is to specify information we want to pass back to the, to the completion handler. And in this case, we don't want to pass anything, so we leave it empty. And uh, the function also takes a few arguments. It takes uh, a uh, uh, function object which holds our implementation and the token and any IO object used by the implementation. So let's look at the implementation. So here's our function object. It has a, a function operator, but as you can see, it's a template function and it has a template parameter itself. And this parameter is provided by uh, the async compose function call. And this is known as a, an intermediate uh, completion handler. And we can pass this completion handler, uh, we can pass this as a completion handler to any asynchronous uh, operation that we have in the implementation. In our case, we're doing async reads, so we'll pass, that, uh, we'll pass self as the completion handler to our async reads. And what will happen is uh, when the read completes, this function will be called this uh, function operator will be called again. And, and that's why, why it's named self, because we're basically passing ourselves as the completion handler. Uh, and to make this work, we also need the rest of the parameters need to match uh, the, the completion signature of the async read. So the, the completion signature of async read takes an error code, uh, which tells us if the read was successful or not, and a size t, which uh, tells us how many bytes were read. And as you can see, we're defaulting these parameters because the first time this function is invoked, it will be with just the self parameter. And when we're done with our uh, composed operation, we can call self complete. So, uh, so this uh, function operator will be called multiple times depending on how many asynchronous operations you have in your implementation. Uh, so how do we implement this? Uh, we could implement this using a simple state machine, but instead I'm going to use uh, ACS uh, stackless coroutines, which will do it for us. So this looks a bit similar to the C++ coroutines example, but with a few differences. Uh, so we need a coroutine member variable, and we need to wrap everything in a macro called boost ACU core re-enter. And instead of co await we're using boost ACU core re here. And as you can see, we're passing uh, self as the uh, completion handler. So these macros will basically turn the function into a state machine. And that's it. Now we can uh, call our function like any other ACU operation, and we can pass 
whatever completion token we want. So in this case, we pass use of waitable. So the function will suspend while we wait for the message to be read. And when it's resumed, we're ready to go with the message. So if we're writing a library, we pro probably want some custom error codes. And as you may have noticed, uh, Acer is using post system error code for its error handling. And if you're building on top of ASU, you should be using it too. So we create an enum with our error code. And we use an error code called invalid bottle link pair. So if someone sends a message uh, with a bottle link greater than some maps, we just throw this error. And uh, Boost has a template type that we're allowed to specialize inside the Boost system namespace. And it's called uh, is error code enum. And what this does is, if we specialize this, uh, it lets our enum be automatically automatically converted into an error code. We also need something called a category, uh, and categories are used to avoid collisions between error code numbers. So if we have two categories A and B. They can use the same error code number and still be different. So uh, our category derives from boost system error category. So we need to override a couple of functions. The first one is the name function, uh, which will return some identifier for our category. We could use, for example, uh, the library name. And we also need uh, a message function, which will uh, translate our error code number into a string. We just switch on the error code, and if it's invalid body length, we return uh, the string invalid body length. So uh, categories are passed around by reference, and they are compared by their address. So we need to make sure that there's only one instance of our category in the entire program. So we use a single thumb for that. And the last thing we need is to tell Boost, Boost how to uh, create our error code. So we create a function called make error code, and this function needs to live in the same namespace as the error code enum, uh, so it can be found by ADL, uh, argument dependent lookup. Uh, so we create the error code by uh, passing our error code as an int and our category. And that's it, now we can use our error code. So we uh, will change our uh, completion signature to take an error code instead of leaving it, leaving it empty, as before. And let's do some error handling. So we, first, we probably want to check uh, that, yeah, check if our uh, async read was uh, successful or not. And if it wasn't, we'll complete with uh, the parameter ec, which will hold uh, the ACU error code in that case. Uh, then we have the case where the body length is zero. In that case, we're done. We don't need to re read the body, so we just complete with a default constructed error code, which will, which means success. And if the body length is greater than some max, we will complete with our new error code, invalid body length. So if we invoke the function uh, with user waitable, and uh, our, error, our new error is triggered, it will throw an exception by default. An exception will type system error. And uh, the what function will uh, uh, print out the message, invalid bot link, uh, the name, which was my lib, and the error code number, which is one. The last thing I want to show you is how we can uh, wait for an event to happen uh, across different uh, chains of asynchronous operations. And we can use ACO's timers, kind of like an asynchronous condition variable. And I'll illustrate this with a producer-consumer example. Uh, so the producer will put some stuff on a buffer and then signal to the consumer to start reading. And the consumer will read, read from the buffer and then signal back to the producer to produce more stuff. So we use two timers for this. One that we can wait for, for the buffer to become non-empty, and one that we can wait for uh, the buffer to become non-full. 
And as you can see, we'll set them to expire at time point max, which is basically saying they should never expire. So if we call wait on them, they will wait forever. And the only way, the only way to get out of the wait is to call cancel on the timer. So calling cancel will be our way to signal that the event has happened. Um, so this code is single threaded, so we don't need any locks like usual producer consumer examples. Uh, so let's look at the producer. So first we we'll check if the buffer is full and if it's full, we'll wait uh, on the non-full uh, timer. And uh, it will wait there until it's canceled by the consumer. And then we'll do a while loop. So while the buffer is not full, we'll produce stuff and put it on the buffer. And then we'll call cancel on the non-empty timer to uh, signal to the consumer to stop working. And the con consumer is similar. It will check if the buffer is empty. And if it is, it will wait for, uh, on the non-empty timer. And while the buffer is not empty, it will take stuff from the buffer and process it. And when it's done, it will cancel the non-full timer to signal to the producer to continue again. So uh, to sum up, uh, you should use uh, the async compose function. It's a great building block for your library. You can build more and more complex uh, functions. Uh, and you should plug your library into uh, Boost System Error Code. And you should use ACS timers to be able to wait for events across different chains of asynchronous operations. Uh, and that's it. Now you have uh, all the tools you need to be able to build a, a library on top of Boost ACM. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah? Uh, boost system error code, how, how does it uh, interact with uh, std error code? Uh, yeah, it can be converted to uh, std error code automatically, yeah. To, 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 to question, the boost error code is much better because it's compile time, it's like it's on Facebook. The std, they, they, they made it on. You have to use the macro for the like dot devices. If I have to use the macros for for the implementation, uh, no, I could have like a, a variable, a state variable that says now we're in state uh, read header, and then set it to like. Sorry. Uh, so now, now this is a stack list because uh, it doesn't say the stack. Uh, we can't use any, any local variables here. We need to, if we use variables, we need to put them as members. Uh, so uh, could we use the C++ 20 coroutines for the implementation here? Uh, not if we're using uh, the async compose function, but I believe there's a experimental function called uh, co-composed, I think it's called, uh, that can be used with C++ coroutines, but I haven't used it yet. I think this is really hard with switch with dancing to E. Yeah, yeah, so this translates into a switch statement with a bunch of labels and go-tos. So, yeah. Because um, you, you bring the full yield from the E, and that's like, I think you can jump from the E to the E and then you can do the switch statement. Yeah. 